You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And th James, what the hell is that? That is the FP700 F-150. No, I, I know what the FP700 is. It's the- Supercharged from the factory truck, got a Whipple supercharger, 700 horsepower. Very cool, affordable warranty, it is the whole thing. You put it on a normal V8. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, what the hell is that? That is Cowboy Karsten. And why does Cowboy Karsten have goats? Well, first of all, Cowboy Casting's very particular. But most importantly, WeatherTech are supporting this video and we wanted to be able to show off the durability of their truck bed liners. So that one that the goats are on right now, that, that looks a bit like the, uh, Yeah, that one has the tech liner and then our crew truck even more insane impact liner, which has all the high performance, extra durability stuff. So it can deal with things that are like even bigger than goats. Okay, like what, like what, like what? What's bigger than goats? Like a, like a mecha goat? And uh, lawnmower stuff? Crate, crates? You're gonna do a lot of truck things, do you, James? Anyway, well, it's nice that WeatherTech supported the video. So uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, bloody good, because those goats were very expensive. You bought the goats? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Okay, wait, what is actually going on here? The answer is a bunch of rear wheel drive V8 madness. The brand new performance packaged Mustang GT now claims 486 horsepower to the crank. And the tried and tested Camaro SS1 LE has a lesser 455 horsepower. And yeah, that is no normal F-150. It has the new supercharged option from Ford that cranks your V8 F-150 to 700 horsepower. That is Raptor R level. And today, with Cowboy Carsten behind the wheel, it means business. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Go on, Camaro! Here we go. Oh. I've got him. Oh, it's close! <laughs> I've got, that hooks up better than last gen. He's edging ahead! Oh my, that's a quick car. Oh, no! No! Oh! Woo! <laughs> yes! I believe they call that winning. Listen, you've got more horsepower. Okay? That is not about horsepower. No, obviously not, because Carsten had 700 of it. <laughs> he actually looks pretty angry. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a Cowboy okay. Carsten rage right there. He looks dangerous. Oh. Um, anyway, this hooks up better than the last time I drove a Mustang GT on this drag strip. That was a few years ago. Yeah, it was. And honestly, I thought that this was noticeably better, whether it's like suspension tweaking, or suspension design. Actually, no, it's not design. It's the same friggin' car. Yeah. Suspension tweaking. Um, <laughs> but no, listen, it was great. That was, it, this is a properly quick car. That was and close. I beat you. No, no, it was close. I, no. From far away. <laughs> How far away? The Voyager? It's probably going like, I can't tell who won that. All right, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I think the roll race is important. Carsten requires a roll race yeah, to needs, be in the game. Yeah, And fair I enough. think the Camaro deserves a second chance, even though I got less horsepower. Yeah, I was pulling in the top end, Yeah, baby. He made a mistake taking those goats out, because that was, that was the only weight he had over those wheels. Right. Roll? Roll. Okay. All right, holding second gear, and I'm gonna pop it into auto. Okay, roll race, roll race, roll race.
This is a fun car in a straight line. It really is. Just the swell of that V8 noise. That was fun. That was fun. My double overhead camshafts would like a word with your little single push rod thingy in the model here. Listen, I, that was very exciting, first of all. Because I had the truck to my left and he, he stayed with me. Yeah. I took him in the end. Did you? Yeah, yeah, but I, I couldn't see I was so far I ahead. Wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were gonna peek around it, and there you came. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. Yeah, this has definitely got, it's got the top end. I know some people were complaining. Is Someone dynoed one of these, and there was a whole thing on the forums about maybe it's not making its full, whatever. Quicker it's than this. quick. Yeah, quicker than this. They both yeah. sound excellent. They sound fantastic. And you know what? We're at the track, and I, uh, I'm gonna go refresh my memory of why this is the better car. Okay, off you go. Okay, we have had the Camaro on this track many times. I just needed to remind myself and you that this is the best track car for the money. Like the Scat Pack and the GT that this saw sort of rivals, it has an incredibly usable amount of power. so muscular, but this has become so good that in our minds, it has graduated from pony car to sports car. It almost feels a different niche, even though it was built to fight the Mustang. The Magna Ride means it handles our track, a track whose surface is inspired by the back of a Stegosaurus. Perfect. It's just such a wonderful car to drive. It doesn't feel particularly light. It's not a small car. And yes, now we've proved that the new GT is quicker in a straight line. But, I mean... Sometimes turning's fun. And in the Camaro, it's always fun. I might be in a corn maze here, but this car just doesn't get lost. And we've actually only ever driven the SS with the manual shifter. This has the 10 speed. And I don't know if you've noticed, I haven't actually shifted once. The shift logic is perfect in this car. Box on that upshift, it sort of does an extra scream. It goes, <laughs> People are so obsessed with lamenting the loss of this car with the manual, or this stop getting a thing, or now the Nismo Z is heavy and automatic. And yeah, to be honest, that is all quite sad. But nothing quite saddens me as much as the fact that this is the final year of this car. The car that underpins the CT4 and CT5 Blackwing. Legendary cars that you can only whisper about now. I don't want to whisper about the Camaro. I want to shout and GM seemed to refuse to. Dodge have all their last calls and this final this and they're celebrating this. This is going out with a whimper and that's not good enough for me because the last thing this car wants to do is whimper. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. But before we do, let's have a little refresher on what this new Mustang GT actually is. What it actually is, is the old Mustang GT with some new trimmings and trappings. That is to say, this is fundamentally the same car as last generation, except now, Thanks to a dual throttle body setup and the active performance exhaust, it now makes 486 horsepower. Couple that with tweaks to the suspension setup and changes to the steering, and we found on the canyon roads in California on the launch of this car that there have been some great improvements to the car overall. But the track is a different story. So, thanks to the wonderful team at Eastgate Ford, who helped us get into our new F-150 crew vehicle, we have their demonstrator with the performance package, which even further tweaks the suspension brakes and differential on our home track to see if it can finally put the Camaro in its place.
A lot of the things that they have tweaked, I like a lot. I think that the chassis feels a little bit sharper. It doesn't boat around as much as it used to. And the damping is actually quite excellent, even though this one isn't even the Magna Ride. But no matter what you do, the best part of the story is the engine. Listen to it. Woo! It's got a high revving feel to it, it just sings. I really do like that. I really don't like the 10 speed though, not from a performance perspective, because as you saw in the drag race, it dominates. The ratios are really close. But when you're on a track and you want to shift with the paddles for fun, the gear ratios are so close, you can never seem to enjoy a shift. You either miss it or shift too early. So I don't really like that. And you know what else I don't like? Is the way this car feels on a track. Because the steering, and I've gone on about this and I'm not gonna dwell on it again, but the steering just is too numb for me to know what's going on in a corner. And that is horribly detrimental to driving a car that's this big on the limit. They did stiffen that rod going from the steering wheel to the steering rack. And I can feel that there's more vibrations coming through the steering wheel. But what there isn't, crucially, is the loading and unloading of the weight of the steering as those front tires gain or lose grip. And that's what tells me where the understeer is. That said, I don't really need to be told where the understeer is because the understeer is, well, it's everywhere. As soon as you put any throttle mid-corner, it pushes horribly. It isn't for the track, it's a cruising car. It doesn't feel right here. That's probably what the dark horse is gonna do. And I don't think that was really Ford's intent with this. This was to cruise and to make noise and to look at and maybe to drift with because they put this drift brake in. Remember, this is not a real handbrake and it's not a hydraulic handbrake as in it's not connected to a master cylinder with fluid going to the rear wheels that locks them up. It's electronic. This is literally a button. It's a glorified button that I push and it should lock the tires. So let's have a go. As I played around with the drift brake, I found that when it worked, it worked great. It felt as if I was in a car with a proper hydro handbrake. Unfortunately, it wasn't consistent enough to really build confidence with it, especially if I wanted to enter a high speed corner sideways. It felt like there was almost a bit of a safety net. Okay, no, that didn't work. You have to get it exactly right, and the window of correctness is way too small. I don't have any predictability. I'm going in here in third gear right now. Turn the wheel, hit the handbrake. No, 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 there it goes. I didn't even do that. Okay. I conceded that perhaps I wasn't getting the hang of it, especially considering I tried the drift brake on the launch with the manual, which felt much more natural and intuitive to me. That said, this is a 480 horsepower rear wheel drive car. So if I want, I can just go in normally. A little bit of a power slide. Get the rear to go. And <laughs> carry it right on through. That's a good time. That's a good time. It'll do that. But it doesn't feel at home doing really any of this. Between this and the Camaro, the Camaro is the car for driving hard around corners. The Mustang is not. All right, let's take a look at the fastest lap in the Mustang. As usual, this was recorded at the beginning of the day when the tires were still fresh. And as always, the rules are that I only get three hot laps total with each car. Now, the Mustang GT. Even with the performance pack, it just didn't feel at home on our track. No matter what I did, its tendency was to understeer under throttle until too much throttle would send it into a heavy four-wheel drift. Couple that with the fact that I had a very hard time detecting wheel slip meant that being precise on the limit was very challenging. It was also difficult to be precise with the braking. All of these things together with some tires that didn't feel up to the task of handling the weight of the car, and I could tell right away that this wasn't going to be the best lap time. 
Also, I did run the Camaro, but since it's not a new car and the brakes weren't as fresh as the Mustangs, it was just for reference. similarities here the way that yeah if you if you step back it it looks very much like they just took the panel from a Camaro and put it on a Mustang yeah I'm gonna gloss over that the way that Ford glossed over it with this gloss blue no it's not gloss blue that's a great segue though yeah it would have been cool oh uh, yeah I'm pretty I'm it's pretty a, proud of you it's for a that metallic one. yeah um these are both great looking cars stunning and they're both great driving cars but 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 but, but in their own narrow avenues does that make any sense? I mean, and the avenues are really far away from each other. All right, let's, right? Get, let's get down to it. You want, some, you want some lap times? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I did do a lap time in this, by the way. That's why I just got out of it. Okay. Um, because I, this, is, this is an owner car, and it's, a, it's not brand new. So the tires and the brakes aren't perfectly fresh, and it's got just a bit of a tweak of a track alignment, just like, I think, a front toe change. So what I'm hearing is not fair. So not fair. So it's not, not an official time for the leader world, but I did run a time in it just as a reference point today. So that okay. we know. Well, okay. so far, we've done the SS1 Aliba. We had it on Cup 2 tires. Yes. So that did a 111.58. Yes, and we did an SS1 Ali on the stock tires manual, and that also did a 111.58 thereabouts. Oh, okay. Right, so, just remember on the, on the Z video, we did that. Right, so this as an auto should this be is, about the same? It should be about the same, and lo and behold, it was. I did a 111.83. Okay. Right, that, that accounts sense. for, you know, not yeah. being Breaks brand and new and everything, right? Um, this is the one. Yeah, this, this is, is the, the one that This matters. is what we care about. Now, I did say this isn't a track car. No. Like, it, the, that's what the Dark Horse is for, right? And I'm sure there's going to be some sort of a GT500, and they literally just released the GTD. Well, that's different, though. That's a, that's a race car. GT3 RS fighter. It's, yes, exactly. So, I listen, everyone just calm down about the time. I haven't said it yet, but just, like, already breathe. Mustang owners just start practice breathing. <laughs> well, the okay. previous gen with the PP2, which should be said is a more aggressive performance package than the GT performance package now. Yes. They've pushed some of that stuff up to dark horse only. Yes. It did very well. What did it do? With cup twos on it, it, had, it did a 112.77. Right, this wasn't that quick. Um, right. It wasn't it really should, anywhere near that quick. Okay. It was a... Uh, <clears throat> It's got, I'm guessing mid 113s, sort of around RCF track edition. It was a 114.17. Wow, okay. So that, that shares the company with a Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye. Like, that's a 700 something horsepower. Is it 800 now? It's 800. Yeah, but that's like trying to drive a locomotive around the track. That's a different. This should be. It should be. It's the brand new Mustang. It's a cruiser. It is a cruiser. It's a cruiser. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> that. No, I just, it just, it didn't turn. You put this thing on a stickier tire, it's going to do a better time, obviously. But I just, it just, I couldn't get it to turn. I even screwed with the pressures. I broke, I broke my rule. I didn't do the three hot laps, one warm up lap, one cool down, as we do for every single car. I actually stopped, abandoned one of my laps, and altered the pressures. Just to get the best out of it? Yes. Well, it, it's weird because this comes in beginning of a new generation and this is absolutely end of an era for yes, the Camaro. Completely. This, the story that began when, when a young Englishman James was glued to the screen as Megan Fox leant over the hood of a Camaro. <laughs> yeah, and I think right. I didn't even realize it was a Camaro until 10 years later. Yeah. It was one of those horrendous memes on Facebook saying, yes. where's the car? I don't see a car. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it was back then. I was shan't to apologize because I've grown up since then. Has he? And now 2024, we come to the end and like, yeah. I mean, gonna miss it. So that's the story of the Camaro. I mean, this is gonna be the last year, apparently. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I never tend to believe manufacturers until I see it. But then, like, I, I'm not gonna let myself mourn this because it's not gone until it's gone, you know? Also, I've said that its, it's spirits kind of lives on in the CT4 and CT5 V Black. It does, Wing, absolutely. The chassis is spe I mean, the V8 in the Black Wing is amazing. I have to say, and I, and I did drive this, obviously, it, Getting out of that and into this, 
it is like getting out of a pickup truck and in, into a Porsche. Like the difference yeah. is shocking. Yeah. I, this is such a brilliantly tuned chassis. The steering is excellent. The damping is excellent. The weight distribution is fantastic. I love the way it turns and brakes and steers and accelerates. Everything about it's great. <laughs> I just love the car, honestly. But uh, it, it, we, you can rev it with the key. You can rev it with the key. And I've heard they put more screens in it this year. There are more screens, and now we've got the premium today, so we're going to have a look at that in a second. Yeah. Last time we had this, it was in black, so we lost a lot of the accent stuff. Yeah, we didn't get to see this. Yes. Right? I, I honestly think this is a good-looking car. It's I know a good-looking car. Every time there's a generation of car, the new generation, the previous generation, rushed to Facebook yes. and the forums to say, oh, I've wasted money. Yeah. It's a waste. <laughs> and I think that's never has that been more aggressive than with the S550 bunch yeah. about this. But standing in front of it right now, honestly, it's not bad looking. No, it's not. But then I, that's, this Wait, is where- are they saying it's bad looking? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's just, The tail light, on, the guys. way the tail lights crunch and oh, stuff. Oh, whatever. It's not, yeah. no, it looks great. I, well, I, I, it's irrelevant. I think it looks fantastic. It doesn't look too weird. Have you guys seen what BMW is doing lately? We're not going to pick on BMW. Okay, video. fine. Have you guys seen what BMW is doing lately? Oh. Listen, the issue they have with this car mostly, and it's something we made fun of, was the amount of screens. Yeah. However, this one's different to what we drove last time. Yeah, this technically has one less screen. See? Progress. Premium. Oh. That. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that noise. Boom, no. boom, boom. I think Audi's full sprung due technique is better. sprung due technique? Yeah. Dum, 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 dum. What about the That's the BMW thing, That's I think. That's BMW. That's their commercial, and their commercial, ultimate driving machine. We also do melodies for car for manufacturers. Yes, that is when our this side, doesn't, when our this side doesn't, gig. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, we are in the GT Premium Fastback now. Yes. We were just in the normal Fastback when we were on the launch event. So That's right. That means a few upgrades. First of all, instead of two separate screens, we have one long curved screen which is still kind of two screens yeah, yeah i think joined. it is still technically two screens but it's one big piece of yeah aluminum or something we've got funky ambient lighting we've yeah got that's part of the steering wheel yep you got memory seats which i think is optional on here but only on the premium and there's like a premium more premium door card yeah four-way passenger seat yeah spoiling me it's still pretty forward in here but it's still pretty forward in here i yeah. don't mind it i don't mean honestly the only issue that i have with the gauge cluster is not the fact that it's digital at all. Right. I, I like digital gauge clusters because you can make, give it the Fox body gauge cluster. It looks really cool, yeah, right? Wicked. I just don't like that I can see the edge of the screen on either side of my steering wheel here. That cheapens it for me. It makes it feel like I'm in some sort of like wannabe Tesla or something. There's the Fox body gauges. That's just fun. I really like that. I just wish that it was like, you know, in a cluster. Yeah, fair enough. Right? People, are, people were worried it's too reflective. I think it's been fine, and it was fine when we had it in the canyons. I haven't really had an issue with that, honestly. It's got the nine-speaker sound system instead of, I think, six. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, it, I, I like it in here. It's comfortable. The seats are comfortable. The driving position is good. I don't really have any issues with the livability or usability of this car at all. No, better right? visibility than the Camaro. Right. And, and, and I do want to reiterate, I was, like, hard on this car today, and, I, you know, I, and this is not a car that interests me, personally. Um, I'm... I, I spend too much time on the track for, to not choose the Camaro. But if you just want a car that looks cool, sounds cool, makes you feel good, and is very, very quick in a straight line, it has a naturally aspirated V8, this ticks all of the boxes. Yeah. Right? And the Camaro, the interior is starting to feel very dated. Yes, it very, very much is. And this is a, an easier cabin to live in and, and, and look out of, and it's more comfortable. It doesn't feel claustrophobic at all. Okay, so here's, here's the interesting thing. Okay. The Throttle House team is a team full of car enthusiasts. Yes. And off camera, all we do is talk about cars and what we would <laughs> yeah. do and what we would get. And we, we've genuinely pitched this question to the team. And everyone sort of agreed that if you lived anywhere near a city or you were just cruising, you'd take the Mustang. Yes. But if you see canyons, corners, or a racetrack at any point... Then the Camaro wins. Then the Camaro wins hands down. That tells me that they both have their place. The only difference is this is just beginning a new gen and the Camaro is a send-off. So do with that what you will. Yeah. What Chevy have done with that is massively raise the price of the Camaro for its final model year. Yeah. Which is a shame, because Mustangs and Camaros, even in V8 form, 
always carried at least a whiff of attainability. And in these trims, both sit comfortably on the wrong side of 50 grand US. And perhaps they've done that because they know that no one else is replicating this experience. Yes, the new BMW M2 got quicker. And yes, the new Supra is Larry. And the Nissan Z got pretty. But those are all turbocharged six cylinders. If you want loud, delightfully obnoxious, stylized two-door V8 icons that even still have the option of a third pedal, the Americans are the only game in town. And as of next year, only the Mustang will be left. That said, this Mustang with the performance package overall is a bit of a disappointment. Considering the arguably equivalent last generation's PP2 Mustang could best it, it really does feel like you're getting less for your money. But perhaps more importantly, last time we tracked these two, I said that the S550 Mustang GT was more fun than the Camaro. Today, I'm not sure that's true anymore. But you know what is fun? Apologizing to your Ford rep for letting a goat defecate in their press vehicle. But knowing that because of WeatherTech bedliners, it might all be okay in the end. Right? R right, Matthew? Sorry. Um, anyway, yes, as you know, WeatherTech makes floor mats to protect the inside of your vehicle and tech liners for truck beds, which have officially been goat tested by us. And now there's the new heavy duty impact liner. We haven't come across a mecha goat yet, but the impact liner in our F-150 fits perfectly and is incredibly durable. So if you have an F-150 or have any other WeatherTech related needs, click the link in the description. And thanks for watching.